it's never a good idea to actually log into your system as a super user. So if you're on a system and you need to do root level or super user level things, you need to be able to escalate your privilege, which means to give yourself access to things that only the root user or the super user has access to. Now in Linux, there's a few ways to do this. There's the command SU, which stands for substitute user. And this works, but you need to know the password. Now, if you're a system administrator and you're on like a CentOS system, you most likely have the root password and you type SU and it'll ask you for a password. You type in the root password and all of a sudden you're root. Now, there are systems like Ubuntu where you don't know the root password. In fact, the root user doesn't even have a password. Now, in that case, we can use the tool sudo, which stands for substitute user do, meaning do something as another user, but just do one thing. And what this does is it allows you to execute a command with super user privileges uh, without actually becoming that user. So we can say like uh, sudo reboot if we want to reboot the system. A normal system user wouldn't have access to reboot, but the super user or the root user would. So if we type sudo reboot, it's going to ask for our password. And then if we type our password and we're allowed to do it, we're in the proper security group, it's going to allow us to execute that as root, even though we're not becoming root. And then in order to make sure that we don't shoot ourselves in the foot, because honestly, I'm really good at shooting myself in the foot when it comes to technology, there's a tool called vi sudo, which which helps you create the configuration file that will make sure you don't do some syntax error and all of a sudden you can't do things on the system as root because you've messed up the syntax of the sudoers file. Let me show you what I'm talking about. First of all is just SU because on a Red Hat or a CentOS system, this is going to be a way that you can become the actual root user on your system. Now I'm on CentOS because like I said, Ubuntu does not have the root user as a viable user. Like there is no password set. It's just something that doesn't exist. So you can't log in as the root user. However, in CentOS, it's going to ask you for a password. Now it's not asking us for Bob's password. It's actually asking us for the root password, which I happen to know. So I'll type in and then boom, you'll see we're actually root at CentOS. So who am I? I'm the root user, all right? And this is going to allow us to do things as root, like ls in the root folder. Hey, there's all the files in the root folder and I can do that because I'm root. Now, if I type exit, I'm back to being Bob. So Bob at CentOS. And now if we try to do that, ls root folder, uh, no way, Bob, you're not root. You can't do that. Now, the other way we could go about doing it is doing sudo ls root press enter, it's going to ask us for the password, but notice it says password for Bob. So it's just asking us for Bob's password. I type Bob's password, and then it will do one command and show us that ls of the root folder. But notice I'm still Bob. I actually didn't become the root user. I just executed one thing as with root privilege as the root user itself, okay? And now that file that will allow people into that group, because you don't want everybody on your system to be able to run root commands, right? But Bob is a sysadmin, and so we want him to do that. The way that we edit that is inside the etc. sudoers file, and I'm just gonna cat it first. So I'm gonna have to be sudo, or I'm gonna have to be root. So sudo cat etc. sudoers. All right, and this is the actual configuration file, but we do not edit this file directly. Let me say that again. We do not edit this file directly. <laughs> we want to use the tool vi sudo. So we'll type sudo because we have to do this as root, vi sudo. And using vi, it's going to open up that command. So what we're doing is just editing the etc. sudoers file, but it's doing it with uh, an, a wrapper that's going to help us make sure we don't mess up the syntax. Now, how this works is we can define things by users, so a particular user can have different sudo access or generally how it's done. Let's scroll all the way down. There's a lot of things that we can specify, like you can do this or you can't do that. And thankfully, there's a really nice uh, set of examples here for what we can do. But I want to scroll all the way down to here. Okay, now there are a lot of alls here. So let me explain what's going on. The first field is the root or the user that we're talking about. In this case, root. Now it means that root will be allowed on all hosts. This isn't used often because generally we just are on the local computer. But if you're on a network, you can use one sudoers file for multiple computers. But all means all hosts that this sudoers file is controlling. The root user is going to be able to 
do this on all of those. And then all in parentheses here means as all users and all groups. And then lastly, the last all here is what commands can root user run and it's all. So all equals all, all, I know it can be confusing, but just follow the pattern that's already in the file. Okay, so this gives root all access. Down here, if you're in the wheel group, that's what this percent means here, is that it's specifying the a group wheel. So this means everybody in the wheel group is going to be allowed to run all commands because just like the root user, they're on all hosts as all users, they're going to be able to run all commands. Okay, so if you're in the wheel group, which Bob is, he's going to be able to do all the things in sudo, just like we did. Now, there's another thing you can do, and that is to not even ask for a password, which sounds really insecure, but the advantage is then you can do things with sudo inside a script file where you wouldn't be able to type in your password. How that would work, notice it's commented out here, but what we would do is say either a user or a group, all hosts as all users, no password, colon, all. And that means it can run all commands with no password. Now, the nice thing is we could put just a single command here. So that, like, let's say we just want him to be able to, I don't know, do ls as root. Uh, so if we just put bin ls here, they would be allowed to just do that with no password. But the no password feature seems like a silly thing to include, but it's really nice for scripts and things like that. Anyway, we make changes here if we want. And then when we save this file, it's going to check to make sure that we don't do something dumb. So let's do something dumb just to test it out. This is just a comment. Let's do that, which this is a horrible syntax. This doesn't mean anything, right? So we'll try to save this file. Oh, it says there's a syntax error in line 116. Now what? I'm going to say Q. Oh, and it's a capital Q if I want to save changes and quit, which I don't. I don't want to do that. So X is going to allow us to exit without saving changes. Or we can do E to go back in and edit it. I'm just going to do X because I just want to not make changes and leave it just like it was. Okay, so that is how sudoers is edited. Uh, it's really easy to do. Just be sure to use that tool so that it syntax checks for you and you don't accidentally lock yourself out of the system. Now, I want to show you like an inside trick, and I do this on Ubuntu systems, even though it's kind of like skirting the security that they've set up. But check this out. If you're on an Ubuntu system and you want to do something with escalated privileges, you would have to do sudo, right? Like if we do ls of the root folder, you can't do that because you're not root. But if we do sudo ls root and type Bob's password, well, there's nothing in there, but it didn't give us an error. We're allowed to see what's in the root folder. But here is something tricky. What if we were to do sudo su and press enter? Now, it would normally ask us for Bob's password, but I just typed it in up here. So what I'm doing is I'm using sudo to execute a single command with root privilege. But that command I'm, ex I'm executing is su. So even though I have no idea what the root password is because it's not set to something that people know in Ubuntu, all of a sudden I've become the root user by doing this little trick, sudo su and boom. Now, all of a sudden, I'm not just executing something as root. I am the root user. So even though Ubuntu is not set up for you to be able to use SU to become root, you can if you do it in combination with sudo. Now, if you're a sysadmin, you're going to have to use escalated privileges at some time because things need to be changed and fixed on your system. Thankfully, there are a few ways to do it, either using SU or sudo. And remember, if you mess with the sudoers file to add users or group or change things, be sure to use vi sudo as your editor. Otherwise, you could end up making a syntax error that will lock you out of your system. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.